just texted me to tell you the store it was from. I couldn't be bothered to text, to be honest. Anyway, you were at work, so you wouldn't have replied for hours, and my mom was heading home then. Look, it's just a jumper. It's not a big deal. You can go buy another one if you're so desperate to have it. I shouldn't have to buy another one as I already bought myself one. Why are you getting that? Do you not want me to treat my mom nicely? Treating your mom nicely would be taking her shopping to buy her own clothes, not giving her mine. Besides, giving her the jumper isn't the problem. Well, it is, but the point is that you just took my things without my permission and gave them away. How would you feel if I gave my dad your new suit? Well, for one, it would never fit your dad in a million years. And two, if you did try to give it to him, then you would find the rest of your stuff in the front yard. Oh, wow. Real mature. So why shouldn't I do the same to you? Well, it's just a jumper. My suit is more expensive, so it matters more. You are unbelievable. Is that why you keep giving my stuff away, even though you know it's wrong? Well, yeah, it's my mom. She's more important than anything, so she should get what she likes if that makes her happy. How can you say that? Do you not hear how conceited and horrible you sound? Do you even care that you've actually upset me quite a lot? No, not really. You're always getting upset over nothing. Frankly, I don't know why I put up with you. My mom told me ages ago that I should look for someone better. Who isn't such a leech? Leech. I'm the leech. Have you actually met your mom? Because I'll tell you right now, she's the only one around her who is being a leech. Don't you talk about my mom like that. She's a saint, and you better not forget it. She's done so much for you, and all you are is ungrateful. What has she done for me? Apart from stealing my clothes and a bunch of other stuff that belongs to me? Yeah, I know this isn't the first thing you've given her. And frankly, I'm sick and tired of it. So from now on, you aren't to touch any of my things. If your mom likes something of mine, then she can ask me where I got it from, instead of pinching it like a thief. Whatever. I'm getting back to work. Fine. Bethany, dear, did I see you driving a brand new car the other day? Hi, Sheila. Yeah, I just recently took the finance out on it. I'm glad you like it. Oh, I love it, dear. It's so sleek and modern. I've always wanted a car like it. I'll swing by to pick it up later today, if that's okay. What are you talking about? Well, Tim said I could have it after he realized how much I liked it the other day. He did what? Yeah, I told him that I'd always wanted a car like it and asked how much it was. Well, I'm sorry, Sheila, but you can't have it. I need my car to get to work. It's a 30 minute commute each way and public transport just isn't reliable enough. Plus, I've saved up for this myself. So why would you expect me to just give it up? I must say that you're being quite selfish and rude. My Tim will hear about your behavior, don't you worry. Honestly, I don't care if he does or doesn't. It's my car. Keeps telling me that I can do better. You really are stupid. Fine. You, Darcy, and your mom can all have a nice life and leave me alone. Oh, and just to let you know, you might have the car, but it sure isn't staying in my name. If you truly want it that badly, then you've got to sign the paperwork and have all the financial responsibility and liability transferred over to you. Fine. Send them over, and I'll sign them. Anything to be rid of you. How could you do this to me, Bethany? After all we had, why would you treat me in this way? What are you on about, Tim? I thought that once the divorce papers were signed, I'd finally be rid of you. You know exactly what I'm talking about. You're taking half of everything I own? Not to mention the legal fees for the lawyers and the rest of the payments? Why would you do this to me? I'm not doing anything to you. I'm only getting back what you owe me. What are you on about? Well, the house was in both of our names, but you haven't paid a single penny towards the mortgage, meaning that I've had to pick up your slack. It set me back a load, not to mention all the other bills that were in both of our names, and yet I was the only one who paid them. And the fact that you were having an affair, well, I figured some compensation for withheld affections was in order, don't you think? But I don't have that kind of money. I can't pay all of this. I've already had to sell mom's car to cover some of the fees. Wow, that's really too bad. Oh well, I'm sure that you can just get your new girlfriend to give your mom hers. I can't do that. You had no problem telling me to do it. Anyway, I'm sure that you can just talk to the judge. You're a man after all. He's bound to believe what you say. Bethany, please, tell your lawyers to call everything off. We can work something out. Sorry, Tim, but you didn't want to try and work things out when I asked you to stop giving my things to your mom. So I don't want to work things out now without my lawyers. It's a real shame that you had to sell the car, though. It was a good deal. Maybe I'll buy it again from the dealers. This time, I'll actually get to keep it, after all. I'm your husband, so you will, you will listen to me when I tell you to stop this nonsense with the court right now. Ex-husband, actually. And sorry, Tim, but that's not going to happen until everything is settled. Besides, this is what you always threatened to do if I didn't do what you said. So I thought that you would be happy to be separated from me. 
As for the money, well, I think I deserve something for putting up with your horrible behavior for so long. Goodbye, Tim. After Tim tried to get me to call off my lawyers, we finally settled things in court, with Tim paying me all of the money he owed for past bills, along with some compensation for the affair. Tim ended up having to move back in with his mother as I sold the house that we had once shared. It wasn't long before Tim started to get fed up with his mother's constant complaining and need for money. However, with nowhere else to go and not a lot of money saved up, he was in for a long stay at his mom's house. As for me, I moved cities and ended up buying myself a cozy little house. I also met a man called Anthony who loved me for me. We ended up getting, we ended up getting married and even had two adorable little babies before long. It's safe to say that things definitely got better once I left Tim. Don't let someone control your life simply because you're scared of what letting go of them might mean. Sometimes the best things in life find us when we're searching the- Hey, am I speaking to Sadie? I'm the waiter from that fancy restaurant you just left. Ah, so you're Bryant, right? Is this text from you to apologize to both me and my father-in-law for the incident that occurred at the restaurant earlier? No way. Seriously? Are you living in a dream world or something? There's absolutely no chance I'm gonna apologize to you. Then why did you request my phone number and mention that you intended to apologize and reimburse me for my meal expenses? Wow, you're even dumber than I thought, huh? I was just pulling your leg, you clueless fool. What the hell were you thinking? Waltzing into my top-notch restaurant and having the audacity to order food. Can't you even read, you illiterate buffoon? It's right there on the damn sign. This place is none other than Elysian Gastronomy, one of the most renowned and luxurious eateries in the entire neighborhood. Do you honestly believe that a pathetic lowlife like yourself is remotely worthy of setting foot in my esteemed establishment? Ha! Dream on, loser. What do you mean? My father-in-law and I were simply hungry, so I entered the restaurant to grab a meal for the both of us. Is there something inherently wrong with that? Oh, look at you, with your pathetic attire and that stinky smell coming off your outdated clothes. Did you crawl out of some slum or what? And what's the deal with that old man you dragged into my upscale restaurant? This place isn't a charity. Did you honestly think that by bringing him along, you'd make me feel sorry for you and serve up our exceptional cuisine for free? You're absolutely delusional. What's your problem? I entered the restaurant simply because I knew I had enough money to cover the meal. But your behavior was completely unacceptable. You made my father-in-law and me wait for over an entire hour before serving our food. And when something was finally brought to our table, it was far from deserving the name food. It looked like you plucked it out of the trash and dumped it on a plate or something. What are you blabbering about? It's French cuisine. Are you really so dense that you can't even appreciate the magnificence of luxury dining? Look at you, making a mockery of yourself by stepping foot into my restaurant. You clearly have no clue about authentic, high-quality gastronomy. Pathetic. Oh, really? If the food you served was truly authentic French cuisine, as you boasted, then why didn't you eat it yourself when I requested? I distinctly remember the look on your face as if you were about to vomit. Yeah. I actually did that. So what? What can a pathetic beggar like you and your decrepit old man do to me, huh? I'm the freaking waiter of this renowned restaurant, so I have the authority to determine who is worthy of being here or not. Really? So that's why you're behaving like a clown? Attempting to trick us into eating leftover food from the trash? I understand that waiters play a significant role in any restaurant, but they're not irreplaceable, you know. I was safeguarding the restaurant from despicable, shameless thieves like you. I even went above and beyond by saving a ton of food from going to waste, picking it up from the trash and serving it to you. I took a spoonful of the discarded food, plated it up, and voila! A brand new dish for your enjoyment. <laughs> Look at how brilliant I am. I single-handedly prevented leftover food from being squandered. I believe I deserve a generous pay raise for my exceptional efforts. What? How could you do such a thing? It's beyond disgusting, to say the least. Can't you see? I simply can't allow any random riffraff to come inside and lay their grubby hands on our precious belongings. Especially not some shabby, 
poor folks like yourselves. That's why I took the necessary measures to drive you and your old man away. You clearly didn't belong in a high-class establishment like mine. I was just doing my job of safeguarding my esteemed customers from unsavory individuals like you. How dare you have the audacity to speak to me as if I did something wrong, when it was you and that old geezer who had the nerve to invade a place where you clearly didn't belong in the first place. You not only served us leftovers from the trash, but you also had the audacity to chase us out of the restaurant. Do you even comprehend how incredibly rude and disrespectful your actions were? It left my grandfather-in-law utterly speechless, unable to utter a single word. As we were making our way to the exit, you even had the audacity to accidentally splash wine on my dress and extend your leg, seemingly attempting to trip my father-in-law? Look, it's just common sense, you know? I was only trying to give you a little reality check, reminding you where you stand in this world. So take that lesson to heart and don't even think about stepping foot into my restaurant again. Got it? You and I? We're not on the same social level, and let's keep it that way, okay? Fine. I won't waste any more of my time trying to reason with you since it's clear you're not open to any advice. I'll have a conversation with your manager to discuss the situation and hear their perspective on the matter. Hello? Is this Mr. Anderson, the manager of Elysian Gastronomy? Yes, it's me. What's the matter? I have some complaints to address regarding one of your employees, Bryant. I attempted to contact you while I was at the restaurant, but the staff informed me that you were not present. Oh, I apologize for not being available at the time. I had to attend to an important matter, and I hope you can understand and forgive me for not being there to assist you. Now, could you please let me know what specifically happened with uh, Bryant? Did he do something that caused offense or concern? Yes, I must say that I find his behavior to be unacceptable. It's evident that he holds some discriminatory views towards me and my father-in-law during our recent dinner at your restaurant. It appears that he lacked proper training in terms of his table service skills. And what did he do exactly? Well, the whole experience was quite frustrating. We ended up waiting for an, over an hour for our food to arrive, which was already quite disappointing. But when we voiced our complaints and expressed our dissatisfaction, he forcefully brought us something that was absolutely horrendous and didn't even deserve to be called food. To make matters worse, when I confronted Bryant about the issue, he simply shrugged it off and claimed that it was some sort of French cuisine. It was only later that he admitted to intentionally serving me leftover food from the trash? Can you believe the audacity? Oh, <laughs> so you must be the one who had the nerve to step foot in my restaurant with an old man, huh? Bryant already filled me in on your little escapade. Um, yes? Is there a problem with that? Well, excuse me for being brutally honest. But are you seriously that dense that you couldn't even grasp the slightest hint? Excuse me? What kind of hint are you talking about? Gosh, you poor people never fail to disappoint me. You're just as bright as a box of rocks. Wait, what did you just say? There's absolutely nothing wrong with what my employee did. The only ones to blame here are you and your decrepit old man. Did it ever occur to you to take a good look at yourselves before daring to step foot into my exquisite and luxurious restaurant? Your threadbare clothes pretty much screamed it loud and clear. It's crystal clear that you belong to the lowly, poverty-stricken class. And let me remind you, my restaurant is strictly reserved for the elite and the elite alone. People like you with your pitiful status have no place in my establishment. What? Do you even have a clue who I am? It's blowing my mind that there are still people like you out there who discriminate. Can't believe it. Look, I couldn't care less about who you are, and that's the honest truth. As for my employee, all they did was tell you the plain and simple reality of your situation. 
we figured making you wait for over an hour would be a clear signal for you to scram for my restaurant. But nope. You and your sorry old man decided to stick around like a couple of clueless fools. That's when I had to resort to telling Brian to take more extreme measures and serve you some trashy food. It was a way to teach you a lesson and make you realize your rightful place. So, back off and learn from it, alright? Wait, hold on a second. Are you saying that it was your idea from the start? And not only that, you were actually present and aware of the entire situation? I thought you were occupied with other matters and couldn't personally handle it. Oh, absolutely right. It was indeed my brilliant idea from the very beginning. I orchestrated the whole thing, pulling the strings like a mastermind. Pretty genius if I do say so myself, don't you think? Why did you go through all that trouble? What have my father-in-law ever done to you? We don't even know who you or your employees are. So I'm genuinely curious why the hate towards us. Oh, there seems to be a little misunderstanding here. You see, it's not that I hate you personally. Not at all. It's just that I strongly believe the world would be a better place if all you poor people simply vanished. So here's the deal. You and your elderly companion walked into my restaurant today, looking all shabby and worn out, and it seriously ticked me off. That's why I had no other choice but to kick you out. You know, to prevent any disturbance for my other valued customers. Can't let you poor rats ruin the vibe for everyone else, right? What is truly mind-boggling to think that renowned restaurant like Elysian Gastronomy could have a manager and employee as toxic and irresponsible as you and Bryant. It's simply unbelievable. Well, let's be real here. You were the one who showed up completely underdressed for my restaurant. It's on you to know better and offer me an apology. Look, now that I have a clear understanding of what was going on, rest assured I won't let you and Bryant get away with this. I'm going to report your actions. And who do you think is actually going to give a damn about what some insignificant little nobody like you has to say, huh? Wake up and smell the bitter reality. Nobody cares about the words of someone as lowly as you when it comes to someone as superior as me. And let's not forget, you should have never set foot in my restaurant today. You had no business even attempting to sit on my chairs or order any food. You were just an annoying obstacle in the way, which is precisely why I had to kick you out. Just you wait and see, because I'm determined to make sure you pay for your actions. I won't let this slide. It's only a matter of time before justice catches up with you. Oh, am I hearing the feeble threats of a sore loser who's well aware that their words are all they've got against someone far superior. How utterly pathetic. Hey, you better step up your game next time, you penniless soul. Goodbye, and hope never to cross paths with you again. Hello boss, how are you doing today? All good? Oh, Anderson, I was just about to bring something up with you. It's actually perfect timing that you're texting me now. Well, boss, I actually have something important to share as well. Would it be alright if I go first and talk about it? Oh, alright then. Please go ahead and speak. I'm all ears. Oh, you have no idea what my brother and I accomplished at a restaurant yesterday. I'm confident that once you find out, you'll be delighted and might even consider granting us a pay raise. <laughs> what exactly do you believe you and Bryant did for our restaurant? It's a bit of a lengthy tale, boss. But ultimately it boils down to Bryant and me successfully preventing a theft at our restaurant. Did you actually stop a theft? Could you please share the details of what actually occurred? Well, it's actually quite a simple situation, boss. There was this woman accompanied by an older man who entered our restaurant. They appeared quite disheveled and suspicious, 
almost like beggars or potential thieves attempting to gain access to our establishment. I had a gut feeling that something was off about them, but I couldn't just outright ask them to leave, as it would come across as rude and could harm our restaurant's reputation. That's when Bryant and I put our heads together and devised a few clever tactics to subtly encourage their departure. Just as expected, our strategies worked like a charm and they left without causing a scene. You mentioned a few tactics? What exactly were they? Well, it's not a significant issue, sir. Here's the deal. I served them some leftover food to remind them of their position. As soon as she and her father saw what I served them, they understood my intentions right away and didn't utter a word. I'm pretty sure she learned her lesson and won't dare to show up at our restaurant again. So what do you think, boss? I have a feeling you'll agree that it was a pretty clever plan on my part, huh? What? I can't fathom the fact that you would do something so despicable and have the audacity to boast about it as if it were some stroke of genius? Hold up, boss. I'm a bit confused here. Why are you saying what I did was terrible? Wasn't I just protecting a restaurant from a potential thief? Isn't that a good thing? Please help me understand. Why did you take such drastic action without even knowing the identity of the people you were trying to remove from the restaurant? Moreover, you didn't have any concrete evidence to support the claim that they had intentions of stealing. What are you saying, boss? Those folks in our restaurant, they're just a bunch of poor people looking to swipe something or beg for money, that's all. What? No. Why did you jump to that conclusion? Who told you that about them? What you did is absolutely unforgivable. Boss, why are you grilling me about this? I simply acted based on my instincts and judgments. My gut feeling was that these people were troublemakers, so I took necessary measures to safeguard the restaurant. What's the big deal with my actions, boss? Now you're still asking me that question? Do you even realize what you did? You straight up kick out my dad and my wife from the restaurant. Can you believe it? Wait, what? Hold up a sec, boss. I'm honestly confused here. Are you saying that the lady and the old dude who showed up at our restaurant yesterday are actually your wife and father? How... How is that even possible? You got it right. They're indeed my wife and father. And yet, you treated them in the most awful way imaginable. How do you even begin to justify your actions, Anderson? Boss, are you seriously saying that? This isn't the right moment for cracking jokes, you know? <laughs> what? You're actually saying that I'm joking with you? I don't have the time or patience for that nonsense. You treated my wife and father with utter disrespect, looking down on them and hurling insults their way. So, what do you have to say for yourself now? Boss, I swear on everything. I had zero clue they were your family. They didn't say a word about it either. Boss, you gotta believe me on this. So what? If you had known they were my family, would you have put on a fake smile and acted all nice? Frankly, that kind of behavior creeps me out even more. It just shows that you have zero manners or respect for others. I bet you'd only act nice towards people you think are wealthy or have more power than you, right? That's the most despicable thing I've ever heard. But, boss, they seem super sketchy, so I thought they might be up to no good, posing a threat to our customers and all. Getting rid of bad apples is a good thing, right? If you suspect someone of being a thief, the right thing to do is to keep a watchful eye on them and only take action when you have solid evidence of their wrongdoing. As a manager, it's your responsibility to ensure that every guest who enters a restaurant is treated well, regardless of their appearance. Your duty is to keep everyone satisfied, plain and simple. But, boss, seriously, I didn't mean any harm. Cross my heart, my intentions were all good, you know. Say no more, Anderson. You and your brother will have a week to gather your belongings and leave the premises of my restaurant. Consider yourself terminated. Take the time you need to make the necessary arrangements before you depart from here. Sir, you can't just give me and my brother the boot like that, right? We only started working here not too long ago. 
It's totally unfair to fire me this soon. I haven't even had a chance to show what I'm capable of. Trust me, boss. I got skills and potential. All I need is a shot to prove myself. I swear, if you give us another chance, I'll never make the same mistakes again. I'll treat everyone with respect, no matter if they're rich or poor. I'm sorry, Anderson, but it's already too late. Please make arrangements to leave my restaurant as soon as possible. I don't want to see or hear from you ever again. Hello, am I speaking to Sadie? Could you please respond, ma'am? Yes, it's me. Why are you bothering to reach out to me again, Anderson? Do you even know how much you've totally ruined my shot at making it big? Why would you and your father-in-law dress up as poor people to come into my restaurant? You totally had me fooled. It was as if you were trying to get ourselves kicked out because you knew that I'd get in trouble for it. You did it on purpose, right? I had no idea who you and your brother were, so I didn't have any preconceived notions or intentions when I walked into the restaurant. I calmly placed my order without causing any trouble or saying anything offensive. And then, out of the blue, you decided I wasn't the right kind of customer for your restaurant. What were you thinking? I messed up, alright? I let my anger take control and I did something on impulse. And now to make matters worse, my boss dropped a bombshell that he's gonna fire both me and my brother. You better talk some sense into your hubby and make him cut it out, cause I can't afford to lose this job. And just who do you think you are to tell my husband what to do? But it's not fair at all. You and your father-in-law totally pulled a fast one on me. If I had any clue who you guys were, I would have never treated you the way I did. I thought you were just a couple of random homeless folks trying to scam my customers or something. Based on your tone, it seems like you haven't yet recognized the gravity of your mistake. To add to that, I haven't received a single apology from either you or Bryant. Wait, what on earth do I even need to apologize for? I had no clue that you and the old dude rolling with you had some kind of connection with my boss. Look. It's all just one huge misunderstanding, okay? So let's just put this all behind us and make things right between us. Sound good? I've mentioned this before, but I still haven't received a single apology from you. Instead, it seems like you're trying to shift the blame onto everyone except yourself. Here's the deal. My husband has decided to fire both you and Brian because of your lack of dedication to your work. On top of that... My father-in-law, who used to own the restaurant, is extremely furious. He has a wide network of connections in the industry, and he won't let you two find work in this field again. So my suggestion is that you start honing your skills and try your luck in a different field. What? How could you pull off such a mean move on me? Listen, Anderson, let me make this crystal clear. Discrimination is never okay, no matter what. What? And those who engage in such behavior must face appropriate consequences. And that includes you and your brother Brian. No way, no way. I'm sorry, alright? I didn't mean to do what I did. I was just being a total idiot, no doubt about it. Please, don't fire me. I know I messed up. But I swear, I've learned my lesson, and I want to fix things. Miss Sadie... Please, hear me out. Can you talk to your father-in-law and husband and give me another chance to make things right? And if it's possible, could you just punish Bryant and not me? I'm begging you here. Apologies won't cut it anymore. The time for that has long passed. Frankly, you should have considered the consequences before treating others with such disrespect. Now, you have to face the repercussions of your actions. There's no one left to bail you out or offer assistance. After being fired from my husband's restaurant, Brian and Anderson faced significant challenges in finding new employment. They had to venture into unfamiliar fields and struggled to adapt. Unfortunately, their difficulties didn't end there as they exhibited a condescending attitude towards their colleagues, resulting in frequent job changes. 
I heard through the grapevine that they eventually had to sell their house and move to a suburban area, hoping for better job prospects. Coincidentally, during a family vacation, I crossed paths with Bryant and Anderson once again. It appeared that they had finally secured jobs washing dishes at a small eatery. They seemed visibly embarrassed, avoiding any eye contact with my family. I understand that personal growth takes time, and people can change their mindset gradually. Despite their past behavior, I still hold a glimmer of hope that Anderson and Bryant will evolve into better people after experiencing the challenges they faced.